What do all great sports cars, powerhouses like the Mazda Miata, BMW M3, what do they all have in common with the trophy cart? Hey man, how about a TVR Griffith? I don't know about that. Today's video is also sponsored by Simply Safe. So me and John both agree that we don't like the look of the frame. Um, it's 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 too big and bathtub like. It looks like a shipping container for a bathtub. Yeah. Um, I was going for simplicity. Like it's easier to work on the engine. Got plenty of foot room. Blah blah blah. But you know we got to have it looking good, right? Of course. So we have some ideas, thinking about cutting it and shortening the top piece and turning this front piece here into the, the dash area. And then we just build off of it a little bit narrower and maybe that'll look better. Yeah, and then we're going to take an inch out of our uprights as well to give it a slight wedge look. Yeah. So small changes, but should add uh, quite a bit of value to the looks department. We hope. <laughs> Only one way to find out. I right? just don't have the vision, dude. I really don't. <laughs>
My favorite part of a kit has to be the Simply Safe lock, which locks automatically on a timer or when you arm your system. You can lock and unlock your door from anywhere in the world and you'll get alerts when anyone uses the lock and you can set up unique access codes for family and guests so you know exactly who and when is using your lock. All in all, Simply Safe protects like a pro for a very fair price. Visit the first link in the video description to check it out for yourself. All right, let's get back to the build. I think that's a good start. Yeah. Let's try that. I think this is looking better, man. So we can tack it in place and then we can uh, give it the one inch rake on the front. The wedge. The wedge, that's right, to get the wedge effect. And then uh, tack the upright and then go from there. Hopefully it'll look a lot better. Okay. Well, so we just wasted half a day. So our front piece is all mocked up. Don't mind the mess. It's, it's our only way of squaring this thing up. So I'm gonna put a fat tack on this side. I'm gonna go make any adjustments we may have to with the spacing over there and then tack it over there. You ready? Yeah. Grab it. Where was that? Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Guess it needs to be gapped a little bit. This wouldn't be cars and cameras if we weren't doing just a little bit of gap welding. Right. We just shortened our two front upright supports by about three inches, meaning we have about three inches of wedge now between the upper and lower frame rails. We also cut two more uh, supports uprights for the middle of the frame to support the dash. So we can get those welded in and hang the engine. Ike, riddle me this, man. Yeah, man. What do all great sports cars, powerhouses like the Mazda Miata, BMW M3, what do they all have in common with the trophy cart. Hey man, how about a TVR Griffith? I don't know about that. Power bulge. They have power bulges, that's right. So uh, in order to tie into this engine mount up here, um, we had to make a power bulge out of a piece of tubing here. It's pretty simple, fish mouth and a small bend so we have a good spot where we can weld in a, a piece of flat bar to bolt through on that front motor mount. So this one's already made. We're gonna show you how to make the next one. All right, so there's our bend offset. You can go put 26 degrees of bend into this tube. Just got a fish mouth, it'll be there. It's a little tight, man. It's because we got the start of a bend and it's hitting this fish mouth here on this upright. Okay, so all we got to do is trim the bottom of the fish mouth off. Yup. So part of the reason we moved out was so we could uh, get a vise and mount it to a table. We have a new place now and now we don't have a vise. It'll be fine. Yeah, we'll make it do. So uh, we're about to hang the uh, front of the engine so we don't have a vise. So we're using the uh, tubing notcher to hold our flat bar. Cover. It's where a bandsaw would be just a lifesaver. There's one. Oh, this is the only one we're doing right now. Getting hot. <laughs> like a glove yeah it looks good so that'll be for the rear engine mount i don't know if we said this before but all of the engine mounts are on the top yeah. of the engine it's really weird well, i mean it makes sense when you consider it in like a motorcycle but just a little bit weird on this but i mean we're making it work yeah two up front 
two on the rear, and then like it looks like just one in the middle. So five mounts. I thought it had six, but I'm I'm not finding six. I'm only finding five mounts. So we can tack that on, weld the tab, add a through bolt, and then we can take these boards out from under this engine, and we will have an engine. Yeah. So that's our tab for the engine mount. But I feel like I could uh, bend it. Yeah. That's pretty much it, man. So that engine is in there supporting its own weight. So we're thinking of putting a, a rock slider here or somewhere along here to make it easier to step into, but the seat height is going to be, I don't know, about there or maybe a little bit lower. We had to make a little bit of a compromise though. If you look closely, you'll see that the engine is not parallel with the bottom frame rail. It actually tilts down in the back. And that's for the drive shaft for seating position. If the engine was completely uh, parallel with the bottom frame rail, the seating position would have been jacked up another two or three inches. And two or three inches is kind of a lot with something like this. It, we just wanted to keep, you know, we want ground clearance, we want suspension travel, but uh, it's important to keep the occupants and the engine as low as possible uh, for center of gravity. So it is what it is. It ought to perform really well. I mean, it's a thousand, it's sitting in the chassis under its own weight and we managed to uh, look the cha make the chassis look a whole lot better uh, today as well. So this is about the right seat height. Um, yeah, I, I think we're going to be able to get away with tilting the seat back a little bit. We have plenty of room back there too, so if we really wanted to just lay back we could. Um, just so we can keep the roll bar at like a manageable height. So. Thank you for watching this video, everybody. Leave a thumbs up if you're enjoying this build series so far. I think it's very promising, uh, especially since we got the front end looking better and the uh, engine uh, hung in the chassis as well. So I think next time there are two more motor mounts we need to get to and then roll hoop, suspension. I don't know, we need to order some more tubing. We need to figure that out. Uh, but check us out on Facebook and Instagram in between videos for sneak peeks on our builds and what we're up to at Cars and Cameras Reviews and help support our future projects by picking up a t-shirt at cars-cameras.com. I think it's coming along really well. Uh, Ike, you wanna lead us out? Thanks for watching again, everybody. We'll see you next time. Check me out at Isaac, it'll be fine. Stay safe out there, guys.